Hello, how are you doing? This is Jeff Wolverton and we're back. This time we're going to be doing disintegration and teleportation and transmogrification. Whatever you call it when something teleports into something and changes into something else. Usually a horrible mistake if you're in the Star Trek universe. So first let me give a little overview of what we're going to do for our very first... There's going to be three products here. The first one's going to be disintegration. We're going to take a sphere, like you're just plain old sphere, and we're going to have it uh, like devolve into particles. In other words, you see this sphere here? Here's exactly what we're going to do. This is just a um, play blast of it. This is just seeing it through particles, not actually rendering. So you get the gag here. We're basically going to have the surface kind of e get eaten away. And where the surface gets eaten away, we're going to emit particles that then, in this case, just flop out. When it teleports, it'll go to another place and reform. But that's another story for the next part. And then finally reform into something else. So you get the gag. We're actually going to render it so when you see stuff like this, we're going to be able to see through uh, those little bits, and you will see uh, something like that rendered more like that. So we're going to do, uh, here's where the interesting parts come in. We're going to have a shader for the sphere that eats away at this edge and has a little bit of a glow on the edge. And then these particles that come out and take over, they're also going to have a glow that's brightest at that edge. So you get this kind of seamless uh, continuity between the surface and the particles it's devolving into. Even though one is a particle system and the other is a shader, so it's normally completely separate worlds, we're going to combine them this time. Uh, and of course, this is actually with a very low particle count. You can increase the particle count to like a zillion and make it super smooth. And actually, in the end, I might even throw a water uh, particle surface on this to make it even cooler. Okay, so enough with the rigmarole. Let's actually get started. As you know, uh, if you've taken any of my tutorials before, I start everything from scratch because I'm a big believer of this concept that deep in the future, things might be different. So I don't want to use... Uh, you're going to notice I don't use like a lot of tools up here and stuff because... If you're watching this in a couple of years, maybe things aren't exactly the same. Maybe they've changed the way things are. Or maybe you're not using Houdini anymore and you're using something else. God forbid. But basically, I want, to show, I want to give the concepts so that they can be applied to anything else. The real point is to learn how to do stuff, not just how to learn to do this particular trick. Okay, so uh, let's start with a sphere. As you saw, I made a sphere. And before we even get going, let's do some silly stuff. Let's actually throw down um a you know camera throw it on a camera and ugh, i keep forgetting to go up here sorry i'm trying to do stuff while i'm talking we're going to throw in a camera that we're going to look through and maybe not that close so just like a camera like that right and then we're also going to throw down a let's throw it on a what do we want like a grid or something i just feel like i wanted something so it's in the world at hand here. So let's take a grid. And uh, I know you're wondering, why am I not doing this inside uh, the tools? And again, it's part of my quasi fetish on this kind of stuff. So here's our grid. And we're going to have a, just kind of a, a background so we have something where we can see what's going on. And I'm actually even going to give the grid. Let's make it uh, give it a little texture. God dang, sorry. UV texture. All I'm going to do here, by the way, is give this thing a checkerboard. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to have something in the background. Later on, we're going to be flying around and uh, particles zip around and just kind of give a general sense of where things are in the world. We're going to want to be able to see, you know, have something that's kind of a base to see what the ground is. So that's where all this is. The other thing I'm doing here is... A lot of you are probably trained to kind of uh, put your materials over here and put them in here. I'm actually not going to do that for the most part. And the reason is uh, because we're going to have multiple shaders on a single thing and kind of keep everything together. Sorry, I'm gesturing with my hands when you see my mouse stop moving, which makes no sense because you can't see my hands. But uh, the other thing I'm going to do a lot, which I really want you guys to do, is start using colors. I use, for some reason, green for things that don't change a lot. So like the camera's green and then the grid's geometry, so it's a lighter green, I guess. And then this thing's uh, important. It's a thing we're going to be messing with, so I'll make it like purple because it's something. Okay, so this material uh, guy, when you make a shader, a shader network, which you can make in here, then you can put uh, that material onto it here. Now, you'd love to just be able to take 
I mean, normally what we do is we would take checkerboard and drag it to that, and then it, it sets it all up, which is great. I'm actually going to go out and take out. It would make sense for this one, but I'm going to do it as an example. I'm actually going to take it out of there and put it into our shader here and then assign it at this level. Whoops. Eh. And assign it at ER at this level and the reason i'm doing that let me give the shop net i can't see this the checkerboard i'm going to say export relative path so it does it there again i'm actually going to get rid of it here there's an interesting point where in particles i think this overrides the internal one so i may have to do that again later but let's just uh keep this as kind of our base okay and so the gag with this and the, again the reason i'm doing that is so that we keep our shaders together. I'm going to call these shaders. I'm going to also uh, make this. The other thing I, I tend to do, which again, a lot of these things I'm, I'm asking you to do is because when you work in production with other people, like in a movie studio, they're going, you're eventually going to hand this stuff off to maybe uh, junior artists and stuff that may do like a thousand of these for a whole bunch of shots throughout the movie. And maybe you're just kind of developing the look of it. Um, that's kind of what I tend to do a lot of. You make the look of it, you they go, okay, it's really cool in this test shot. And we got 50 shots of, you know, Green Lanterns zipping around with beams. So we got to give this to a bunch of people because we have to get the movie done in 25 minutes because it comes out next summer and even though nobody watched it. So the you want to make things, you want to give things colors that make sense. Usually I always put like an out node that's just a null. And the reason is so I can change what that's connected to if I do change what's going on. And anybody who sees this goes that, oh, that's definitely what we're rendering. As opposed to if you just do this or later on this or something, it might be that they come in like, oh, maybe he was using something down here and this wasn't actually the final output. So these are just kind of good practices, I guess I'm going to say. I'm also going to give things names uh, with actual capital letters and stuff. And again, you're like, what the heck? But it's so when people see these things, I'm going to call this object A. Uh, I'm going to call this object A. This is the object we're disintegrating later on. There'll be an object B that it turns into. Okay, so the uh, reason we're doing this is so it's useful to people in the future. And sometimes people in the future, like in my case, ends up being me. But uh, some future version of me that doesn't remember when I made this. So another thing I'm going to tend to do, that you'll see me do a lot of in some of these other guys, is if we have parameters, and I make them red for some silly reason, if we have uh, parameters, actually I'll call them controls, sometimes people like that better, that are going to be used in a lot of places, I tend to make a null out here, okay? And then inside of here, and it's going to be hard to see some of this because I don't have so much uh, resolution for that, make everything invisible. And then we'll make a, uh, like in this case, I'm just going to make a float that I'm going to call uh, base animation. And the reason I'm putting this out here instead of inside of a, a object or a SOP is because we're going to use this in several places. I'm hitting apply and accept by the way there. Okay, so now we have, whoops, where did it go? Base animation, why is it not there? Oh, sorry. Base animation. Um, the reason I'm putting it here is because we're going to have sets of parameters inside of our objects. And sometimes we're going to combine the, or going to, I shouldn't talk and type at the same time. Sometimes we're going to use those in different places. Okay, so the idea is that I'm going to put all our like controls and parameters into this single guy and then reference them inside of here. Okay, so now I'm. So uh, come back for lesson two here pretty soon. The next thing we're going to do is the beginnings of the cool part. We're actually going to make a VOP that's going to decide where this thing kind of disintegrates down. And let's talk about it. Let's say we wanted our sphere. First place, let's make it a polygon and make it like a lot of, uh, I want a lot of points, right? I want something that's got like, pow, loads of points. And then the thing we're going to put down is going to be a point VOP. So the first thing we're going to do is start getting our noise to look good to see how it kind of goes away. And this will be our, um, for lack of a better word, we're going to call it animation right now. And I'll make it green because I tend to do that with uh, point bops that are important. Okay, so this is the 
So you have to bear with me just for a few more seconds. This is going to be our, our object to teleport. And I'm also going to do this again, best practices, because eventually we might change what we're teleporting to instead of being a sphere to being something more interesting like a character. So I'm going to call this the object to teleport. Okay. And then our next step is we're going to come back and stuff's going to happen inside of here. That's going to change the colors of each of these guys. That information will then use to drive particles zipping off it at the edge and driving a shader that makes it disappear and combines it all together for the final thing. So uh, come back for the next lesson and uh, we'll go from there.